What's going on, guys? We're back. As promised. But we do have some challenges. The first one is plugging this darn thing in. Focus going. Okay, camera's probably gonna hunt all over the place. Hey, Dexter, what's up, buddy? Miss you. Okay, so you guys can see the lights from the rod tips. I'm juggling to walk through these rocks, but we're at Joe's Crab Shack and uh, down here in Newport, Kentucky, on the Ohio River. Move spots. We we're at the Looking River mouth. Nothing was happening, so I decided to come somewhere a little more quiet and untouched, and. Uh, the only thing I got to light this place up is this little one dollar headlamp. So hopefully things work out too. Things work out pretty good. We're gonna wing it. I got my battery pack on my phone, so that's gonna be charging. View looks amazing. What time is it there? It is 11:57 p.m. It is three minutes from tomorrow. <laughs> um, I'm gonna use this headlamp to get my baits on. No place to put rod holders, so we're going to be wedging in some rocks. I found two really good spots to hold the rods. They're kind of crisscrossed, but they're holding. So, water's a little bit calmer out here. There's a nice open flat gravel bank there, but I got nowhere to set the rods. So, I'm going to leave them here to tight line. And, uh, <clears throat> we're going to make do with it. So, stay tuned. Got three people watching and one thumbs up already. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> All right, let me go get some bait, which is down here somewhere. I'm kind of fumbling in the dark here. Goes against all my night fishing tips and tricks. I had nothing set up. We just kind of came out here and winged it. My truck's thankfully right up there, though. So, yep, we're good. All right, let me get some bait. This is nothing but cut bluegill tonight. That's all I got left.
run out farther than I can walk it back. I would have ran out of line before I got back. So I had to drag it. So that one's out as far as it can go. Put it out a little more and turn it. See what happens. Did it. Okay, what I miss. Happy Fourth of July to you, Tim. Thank you, Dexter. Yes, I'm out alone. Hey, Justin. Outdoors exploring. Travis Short. Good evening, everybody. Out on the boat, he says. I'm out on the bank. All right, can you guys see the whisker sticks good? You see them right here on the right side of the screen. One's above the bridge, one's at the water. Green lights. Good, yes, okay. See him. You guys should be able to get a good fireworks show if I can stay out of the way. Oh, I'm gonna try to sit for a minute. And it's, the focus is probably gonna go in and out like crazy. One thing that sucks about live streaming off a smartphone, the cameras are not good for holding a focus. Happy birthday, America. Catching anything yet? We just got here. We just set up. We're eight minutes into the stream. I got two pieces of cut bluegill out. They were live bluegill at one time, but now they're dead. And I'm hoping we see one of these things dance. The first rod I threw out, which was my B&M Silver Cat Elite rod, Got a 6,000 C reel on it. Happy Garcia. All right, rocks, get comfortable. Come on. I need a seat. Something comfortable for my butt. Okay. Maybe not. Woo. I'll get it figured out. Haha. <laughs> uh. I pretty much pulled that out. It's about as far as it can go. And then uh, the other line is, is it still rock? No, just get out of the way. There you go. Um, the other one is a 6500 C3 Trophy Collection reel on a Whisker Seeker rod. I'm still here. I'm just off to the side. So sorry if it's kind of dark and you can't see me very well. Y'all stay safe out there. Drink responsibly. Thank you. Yes, alcohol and fireworks do not mix. Do all drinking beforehand. I'm kidding. And if you're not an adult, don't do any fireworks on your own. Unless you're supervised by an adult. Or dared by a cooler kid. I'm kidding again. Any action yet? No, we just got set up. Burger King was closed. What took me so long to move was uh, that guy that was fishing next to me with all the Whisper Seeker gear. Uh, we were talking for a little while. And you know me, when I get to talking, I don't shut up. One of the uh, cat bobbers, and I gave him a lemon grip. Because he was interested in checking the stuff out. Find out the people when I'm out fishing. Get him interested. 
Anything to keep people out catfishing and having a good time, it's all good for me. So this spot is usually pretty good for channel cats and blues, and I'm hoping that we get one. We didn't even get so much as a bite after about four or five hours at the Licking River mouth. There's just way too much boat traffic. The fireworks are going off everywhere. The water, the air temp is warm. It's still in the mid 80s right now and it's midnight. It's uh, very humid. The water temp feels like bath water. The river feels like bath water. That's how hot it is. We're in somewhat of a drought. It's probably spawn time for these cats. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole lot of things working against us here on the Ohio River tonight. And man, am I sweating. I think I'm getting moonburn. Sunburn from the moon. Offer still stands. You guys are local. If you're out here and you want to come out, I'll be out here. You're welcome to come meet me at this spot and join me. And if we get 50 people before I'm done streaming into this live stream, I will give away 10 random whisker sticks lights and a Luma grip to somebody in chat once we hit 50 viewers. Including the full moon. Eh, full moon skeptical. I've had some of the best fishing of my life. Move, rock. Where the landslide brought down. And I've had full moons where I didn't get squat. So I'm going to turn this headlamp off. That's why that won't move. That's because it's rebar. Oh, really? I was trying to wiggle my butt on this rock when I hit my alarm button on my key fob, set my truck off. So we're just kind of sitting in pitch black with the ambient light from the city. You guys can see fireworks in the background going off. They're going off all over the place. And uh, we're waiting for a bite. So I'm the only one here this entire bank line compared to being at the Licking River mouth where there's like 30 40 people fishing so this is all untouched bank line right now untouched water the boat traffic has pretty much all but went away so normally where I fish in this particular spot I'm sitting where my baits would be. That's how low the river is. Normally it's up. I come here when it's flooded up. And I would be underwater right now. And my baits would be dangling in these rocks. So we're throwing a little bit farther out into the river towards the current scene and trying to still hit some of this bedrock but when the river is lower like this and the current is slower it can spread out and got more free room of the river the ohio river is great for bank fishing when it's flooded up because everything hugs to the bank let's see make sure i catch up We've got 10 people in here five thumbs up thanks for the thumbs up I want to go somewhere tomorrow night. Okay, David, if I, if I don't have any plans, if I'm free tomorrow night, uh, get a hold of me on Facebook. My name's Tim Hardwick, Timothy Hardwick. My profile pictures and me have uh, got my son Aiden on my shoulders. I got a Whisker Sticks hat on, can't miss it. It'll say owner of Whisker Sticks LLC, something like that. And we'll try to uh, set something up. That goes for anybody. Maybe we can make a whole big party out of it. Get like 10 of us together. Do something. But I don't know what my plans are yet. Martin says, what's up, man? Catch anything? We caught two mud cats so far. I haven't caught nothing yet. We've been out here since about 6 in the evening. And not 
one bait. Really regretting not going to the Great Miami because I know I would have caught some. I'll be on the river somewhere tomorrow night. Got the whisker sticks rocking. Yes, we do. We got green lights on the rod tips today. Right here. One's uh, above the bridge and one's contrasting in uh, the water right here. See, I'm covering it up. Now it's there. Uh, Great Miami. What's the bait tonight, Ryan asked? We're using cut bluegill. I had live bluegill, but the live bluegill turned to dead bluegill. So now they're cut bluegill. I had one largemouth bass. Nothing was biting on that. I used a, I used a cut up. I have Instagram. Yes. Uh, should just be Timothy Hardwick. I think it's got a picture of whisker stick as a profile picture. I actually don't use Instagram all that much. But uh, if you want to just take my phone number down, my phone number is on the website. It's uh, area code 513-519-4300. Oh, we got a fight. Told you. Bottom rod. I know you guys seen that. Because I've seen it out of the corner of my eye. Let's see if something commits. It's ambient enough here. It looks like it's really pitch black here. I can see everything around me from the light of the city. Maybe all you guys see is a silhouette. On the Great Miami Downriver, probably. I got a blue one on. Blue lights? Okay. Yeah, my number's 513-519-4325. Just shoot me a text message. Tell me who you are. Because if I don't have your number saved, then I don't know who the number is. I don't have calls talking about extended car warranties and stuff. <clears throat> but we're about 15 minutes, well, 18 minutes in. About 15 minutes in the water, and we've already got a bite, so we're doing better than we were. Got 12 people watching. Glad you're back live. Thanks, Jim. There's going to be more to come this summer. I've had a lot of things going on in my life. I uh, had to take a step back and move some things out. Not things I uh, like to entertain for discussion at the moment, but some things have happened. Today, not you. Big fireworks. I was cruising around trying to get shot along the bank line, so out into the current scene. And the silver cat rod, which is the lower light, is thrown down the bank line as far as I can get it and I about ran out of line on my spool so it ain't going much farther down hopefully fishing tomorrow evening what is my number again William it is I heard a leaf move a leaf move it's on the website it's on whiskerstickfishing.com that number to contact is actually my personal cell phone number and the email address, which is whiskerstickscentsy at gmail.com. That's their company email, but that also goes straight to my phone. So there's more than one way to contact me. You can get a hold of me through Facebook if you have Facebook. My name's Timothy Hardwick. My number is area code 
two five. I work second shift, so don't spam me with phone calls and text messages, or I have to block you. But I'm always open to new fishing buddies. No five in the morning phone calls either. <laughs> Be respectful. That's all I have. My number is not private. It's public information. It's on the website. People call me all the time. Just shoot me a text and let me know who you are. Say, hey, it's me. I want to try to hook up some time. We can schedule a time. I'm free just about every other weekend. Just about. So next weekend, I will not be free. I'm saying that now. I'm trying to keep an eye on that lower light because I know it's been hit. I'm pretty confident that these, I got them, this boulder, I got them wedged between easily 800 pounds. It's not like the rock's going to move. And I, I made sure they were shoved down in there good. I gave them a good bend, make sure they're not going to kick out. But once you get a rod stolen out of some rocks live on YouTube, you kind of don't want it to happen again. And I really want to run up to my truck and get my Mountain Dew because I forgot it. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my clickers on since the current's slow enough. Alright, I'm going to call it at night. Going to hit early in the AM. Thanks, Chris. No pole losses tonight. Yeah, I'm going to turn my clickers on since the current's so low. It shouldn't drag my line. That way, if something does happen, I can at least hear it. And I don't tie knots around my spool. When I spool my line up, I use a piece of electrical tape to hold the line. So if it does spool out, it just pops off the tape and doesn't take the rod with it. Go get it. It won't be the first rod I've seen you lose. <laughs> He's got jokes. Back off my drag. Yeah, there's that too. Yeah, I definitely need something to drink. I'm dry heaping. Get my headlamp back on here so I can see just a little bit better with my footing. The light source to watch your footing with. You do not want a broken ankle from your truck. And there's a lot of rebar here too holding some of these rocks together. You don't want to impale yourself. Silver cat starts screaming. I don't think I'd get to it in time. There's not much line left on school. All right, I'll be right back. Give me like a minute. Okay. Ha! Hello, Claire. 
series. I fish primarily around Marietta and Parkersburg. Good morning, everyone watching. Yeah, I guess it's technically morning. It's technically tomorrow. I love that joke. Somebody says, what time is it? Like at 12.01, I say, it's tomorrow. We're 22 minutes into tomorrow. All right, I'm gonna turn these back off. has to know that song. Except it says, you ought to go with me when I go out and drink. Bob and Tom show song. So we're down here in downtown Cincinnati, kind of. Across the river from downtown Cincinnati. I'm gonna leave this right here. Oh, that ain't even doing nothing. Try it like that. Some light, okay. You kinda see me. Oh, excuse me. We got two rods out. 30 pound Praline Big Game high vid line. Abu Reels, CNM Silver Catalyst with your secret rods. I believe it's six odd or seven odd circle hook from uh, an old uh, pack of hook setter hooks that Chris Flores gave me, and uh, they're straight shank circle hooks. They they're really similar to like Charlie Brown hooks. If that rings a bell. You got green whisker stick, whisker sticks. Now I'm doing it. Everybody, I used to get on everybody for saying whisker stick over there, trying to save my life. Now I'm doing it. I've been doing it because that guy who uh, was fishing next to me at the last spot, he had all whisker seeker gear. So I was saying whisker seeker every ten minutes. He did get one run before I left. I didn't hook up. We got green whisker sticks lights. We got a luma grip down there by the rods. Uh, plan the fish if we get one. And we're streaming. It's still today here. Got 34 minutes till tomorrow. Okay, well, welcome to the future. We still don't have jetpacks. Planet Earth is still disappointing. You're not missing anything, Jim. But if I knew the winning lottery numbers right now, I would sure tell you. Oh my God, I wasn't even looking at the screen when I said that and you read my mind. Are you my fraternal twin? Uh oh, I might have to go around. Wait, I don't think I do. Ah! Night fishing tip 574. Always keep a lighter in your tackle bag. Even if you're not a smoker. 
Never know when you need to make a signal fire. But I don't need to make a signal fire, guys. It's been a long, hot, dusty day. And I'm sorry, but I need to lower my oxygen level just a bit. But I don't like smoking on camera. I'm going to sit over here to the side. I can still see all the comments. I put a lot of work in today to try to catch one fish. And it's not paying off on the Ohio River. I just don't think the Ohio River has the right conditions, honestly. Not right now. Stuff's starting to go on spawn. Water temperature is like bath water. Super warm. The current is like non-existent. This stretch of the Ohio River can get almost turned into like a lake. It gets so slow. It's like 0.1 mile an hour. Very, very slow current. So the fish can just go wherever they want. Makes it a lot harder to locate them. And since there's no current, Traditional things, oh, we're getting a hit on the game. Traditional things like uh, planet current breaks, thrown in current seams, and uh, you know, fishing around cover and stuff like that. Whether you got a sonar or not, if you can see a rock formation or you can see a log sticking out of a river that's covered, if you're fishing around and you fish above it, swim up and get it, that type of thing. A lot of that stuff doesn't work in situations like this. You're almost lake fishing, you're just throwing. Get a guess and hoping something's there. That's a long one. I gotta come up and try to reach out a little bit. Good luck. I have to be somewhere at 6 a.m. Keep your lines tight. Thank you, William. And let's see who sent me the text message. Call me Bill. Okay, that's William. Got a missed phone call. Somebody tried to call me. Six nine, and then no, no, no. All caught up. Nice chatting with you, Bill. We had two nibbles in less than a half hour. That's a pretty good sign. We get to watch some epic fireworks. There's all kinds of people down at the public landing lighting off all kinds of big stuff. We've seen like huge rolls of firecrackers going off for like two minutes straight earlier. Big balloons of mortars. I can see other stuff going on on the horizon over the city skyline. Everybody's got their bang on. And I actually found a comfortable rock. Eleven thumbs up, nine people watching. Appreciate it, guys. We appreciate the likes, we appreciate the subscribes, we appreciate the super chats, all that good stuff. If you do decide to donate, any money that's sent through super chat does uh, get saved up, and it's going to be put towards better gear to give you guys better videos in the future. So whether it's a better camera or a new light or some better software, things like that. Any money that's made on this, uh, I try to keep separate from the company, even though it's a uh, Mr. Six LLC's YouTube. I try to keep those funds separate for uh, doing these YouTube channels. between the super chats and the monetization, it adds up pretty nicely. And it gets put towards a good purpose. If you weren't watching on the last stream and you're watching now, 
that are going to be uh, doing a perfection video for night fishing tips and tricks, life hacks, safety tips, and I mean I can cover some of those while we're here. A lot of it's common sense. Uh, I hope whoever hasn't tried night fishing before, and it's kind of the only thing I do. I mean I know I do a lot of daytime videos, but off camera, I do 10 times more night fishing than I do day fishing. And day fishing is just so much easier to film. Fat flu right in front of my line. Uh, night fishing is my home. So, some things are pretty staple. Like, want to get to where you're fishing, where you plan to fish all night. Especially if it's an overnight trip. You want to get there couple hours before dusk so you have plenty of time to set everything up that you need to set up you need to, you're going to know where you're putting your rods where you're putting your firewood where you're putting your tackle where you're setting your chairs up tripods if you're filming all my camera gear uh, everything that you need to set up for the trip you got plenty of time to do it so you know exactly where it is you don't have to fumble in the dark looking for it and I did none of that this time because we kind of came through the spur of the moment. Now the first spot I was at, I got there about two or three hours before when I did pack up to come here. I was packed up in five minutes. I knew where everything was. I was out of there. Uh, Want to have a good light source, a headlamp, flashlight, a lantern, a camera light if you're filming, something to kind of keep the area lit. Uh, don't just rely on the light of a fire or the light of your cell phone because you die. You want to have a backup. Spare batteries if you got the room for storage. Um, you want to have a good light source to see what you're doing. Right now, my light source is the city of Cincinnati. I can see everything around me. I can see my tackle bag. I can see my bait bucket. I can see my rods. I can see where my grips are. I see all the rocks. So I don't have too much trouble fumbling in the dark. But if you're in a, out in a rural area and you don't have city light or anything to help you out, you definitely want something. Get out of my comfort chair here. Hello, Eric. Hello, catfish and crappie. Still here. Hope you guys are doing good. Something else that I firmly believe in when night fishing, with this exception of this little trip here, because we're not going to be here too long, is uh, you want to have a fire, some type of campfire. If you're not breaking any city ordinances or local laws to where it says you can't have a fire, if you're allowed to make a fire, make a fire. Especially if you're out in a rural area or away from civilization. In colder weather, it's a means to uh, deter wildlife, stuff like coyotes, depending on where you're at in the country, bears, wolves. Animals don't like fire. They smell smoke. They know there's fire somewhere. They don't come sneak it up on you in the dark. And it, it's just, you have to, it's state law. Another thing I use the fire for is, uh, well, two things, two smaller things. I call them sub bullets here. I use the smoke from the fire to douse myself, all my clothes, my hat, my hair. I rub my arms, rub it all over my face. I douse myself in smoke for a good 15, 20 minutes. And it's a natural bug repellent. You don't have to spray yourself with all spray and uh, if you don't have a thermocell you know I don't have a thermocell it keeps the mosquitoes off of you it keeps the gnats from flying in your eyes and your ears it keeps all the bugs and critters off of you and they know what smoke means too they don't like the smell of it I doubt the bugs like the taste of it because I never get bit by mosquitoes. 
ticks, I don't know about. I've never had to worry about ticks. Spiders, stuff like that. Creatures of the night away from you, or at least at a safe distance. And it also lets other people around who might be fishing knowing know that you're there. So if something does happen, God forbid you fall in a river or slip on a rock and get injured. If you or a buddy is able to make a phone call, it helps the help who's coming to rescue you locate you quicker. They can track the smoke, they can smell the smoke, they can zoom, they can hone in on you quicker and get you out of trouble in a timely manner. But please, please, for the love of God, make sure that you put that fire out thoroughly before you leave. Take your bait bucket or a bottle of pop or whatever, fill it up with water over and over and over again, and you douse it out until it is completely, without a doubt, put out. Don't leave your fire burn out on its own. I don't care if you're on a sandbar in the middle of the river. Embers can flare up, they can carry in the wind for a long time if they carry just right. And if you're in a dry season area, you can make a huge mess and cause a lot of damage. So, I wish that bite would come again. I'm gonna have to check that rod in there and see if the bait's still there. So, be safe about your fire. Got the rocks around, make a little ring of rocks. Have you a small fire ring, try not to make it bigger than the ring. Don't let your fire get too, too big. It doesn't have to be a big, huge bonfire. I always keep mine pretty small, actually. Uh, it makes my wood supply last longer. It's enough to keep the smoke going, keep a little bit of flames going. And as long as you keep the embers going, you can add driftwood to it. And it's a lot easier to put out. The rocks are helpful for uh, keeping the heat trapped, keeping it hot so your embers stay hot without you having to keep fueling them. What's up, Mark? I'm going to give it just a few more minutes and then I'm going to check that bait. Another thing for the fire a benefit is if you got trash. A lot of trash can easily be burned and you don't have to take it back with you. It'll just get consumed by the fire. Like if you're opening up your fishing pack and it's got a paper card for the hanger like my wife do, you can burn those cards. Uh, you don't want to burn a lot of plastic and rubber. But anything that's like combustible, a lot of paper products, styrofoam cups, go ahead and throw that in there. So fire consumes it. That's less stuff that you got to take home and it's less trash that's sitting on the bank. And when I'm starting my fire, I will actually go around and look for paper trash off the bank. One, to get my tinder hot. Fires have all kinds of good things that you can do with them. Yesterday, since some of you guys are still in yesterday. Take me back to the past, Jim. It's not fun here. Take me back to before coronavirus. Let's check these baits real quick. First, sit with Tom.
this one. taking a mental note because I knew about how far I threw out. I was taking a mental note about how far I was back in as I was reeling it in when I was feeling those bumps. One was a pretty good snag, but there must be something big over there. I'm going to try to throw just ahead of that. Because at night time, It's working right there. Look down in my little hole here. That's the goal. There we go. Get it in the hole, Tim. I was trying to remember where I was catching up on this thing, so uh, I'm pretty sure I got it thrown somewhere above that cover that I was bumping across, so hopefully something will chase out and come get it. If I end up going tomorrow night, I will hit you up. I will get your number off the website. Okay, David. I'm going to take a seat. I'm tired. Set off my car line again. Here I am. We're gonna enjoy the get out of the way of the lower light. We're gonna watch for the greens. And then I can see the chat pretty good from here, so I apologize for the focus. It's gonna be going in and out because of all the flickering lights and the reflection of the river. But we can see the green fuzz balls if they move. We're using cut bluegill. I'm not going to give this place as long as I did the first place. Maybe an hour tops, another hour. It's almost one o'clock already. Clear my note of five million of these things on here right now. Okay. We'll give this maybe another hour tops, half hour to an hour. I'm not going to give it too long because I'm getting kind of tired. I've been out all day, all since mid afternoon. And I got to have some rest if I'm going to do it tomorrow. So while we're waiting on a bounce, we can get back to some of the night fishing stuff I was talking about. So we covered the fire. Burn your trash. Let the tent home. Put it out when you're done. If you can afford to and you're able to, always try to fish with somebody else. Don't be dumb like me and go solo all the time. Things can happen no matter how safe you might feel. This is a perfectly open, safe place to fish. But a lot of these rocks are loose. And... One wrong slip, I could easily sprain my ankle or break my ankle 
or fall on some of this rebar and impale myself in a lung and bleed internally and drown in my own blood. Crack my head open. There's all kinds of ways to die. So if something happens, you want somebody to be able to be there to call for help. And that definitely goes for you boat guys. Don't go on your boat alone at night in the dark. You fall out and drown, nobody can conk your head, nobody's gonna know you're hurt. It goes for bank and boat. Since I do do a lot of solo fishing, and I'm contradicting what I'm saying, what I do as a supplement is I have somebody that I check in with in intervals. And uh, it's usually one of my parents. Uh, my mom usually stays up later than my dad, so I'll send my mom a message like every hour, or she'll send me a message. I'll call her or check in. I'm live streaming right now, so she knows I'm fine. Uh, when, I'm not, when I'm off camera, I'll send a text, say, hey, everything's fine. I'm by myself. I'm going good. Nothing's happened. Our top rod's twitching. Uh, check in with somebody. Get a, get a system going. If I don't respond or don't check in with somebody after a certain amount of time, they try to contact me and I'm not and start looking at trying to get some help. Tell somebody where you're going at the very minimum. Always tell somebody where you're going so they can at least know where to start searching. guy who lost a life in the Great Miami River not too far about 15 minutes from my house I want to say it's about a month ago he had a friend with him he wasn't alone but he tried to swim across the Great Miami River he never came back up and the search turned into safety is a hundred times more important at night than it could ever be in the daytime. You're limited to your senses, you're limited to your sight, your depth perception. Noises sound different at night because it's quieter and sound travels different, they bounce off of things. If it wasn't for these waves lapping on the river right now, I could hear people having conversations on the other side of the Ohio River. That's how dead it is out right now. All your senses change. So safety has to be important. It's gotta be your top concern. Having a quick exit strategy, exit plan, in an emergency or in a pinch, planned out ahead of time to keep in the back of your head is a good key thing to do too. I know my truck is 50 feet away. I climb up a few rocks and I'm there. But if you go on a trip where you want to spend all night, uh, what would be the equivalent around here? I'm talking like a couple mile hike from your car. Uh, say you park Kind of the little Miami River mouth, there's a boat marina. You park in that marina and you gotta hike two miles through the woods to get to the river mouth. It's a fun spot and it's way out of there, away from people, and it's a great place to fish. But if you have to get home quick, or you have to get up out of a storm quick, or a flash flood, I don't know how to get there as fast as possible with the least amount of trouble. If you're trying to hike through two miles of woods in the dark, you can get turned around real quick and easy and get lost. You can lose your sense of direction. So you need to know exactly how to get back to your vehicle to get back home in case something happens. I've already got my truck facing the road. I backed in. So if I have to pull up and get out of here, I throw everything in, I throw it in drive, and I go. I love fishing solo. I just wear my vest and send a GPS pin to my wife. There you go, catfishing crappie. That's exactly what I'm talking about.
Good night, folks. Happy 4th of July. Good night to you too, buddy. Happy holidays. Happy Independence Day. Will Smith would say, welcome to Earth. Fishing solo is fine if you're smart about it. Don't just go off, not tell nobody where you're going, and just be gone. Because even if you're fine, and they're thinking you're going to come home at midnight, and it's 5 o'clock in the morning, and you're not back, you can just be playing catfish all night and having a good time. You're on fire, and you don't want to leave. They think you're going to be home around midnight, and it's 5 a.m., and you're not back. They can be worried, call the police, form a search party, and then they find you, and you're like, what happened either? I mean, it's good to know that you're okay, but I kayak, catfish, hit a 15-pound kisser. Woohoo! I'm getting 15 pounds of nothing right now. Bottom rod can be hit. Maybe that's about too soon. Some subtle switches. But it did twitch. Did you guys see it? It was fluttering. Care if it's a little two pound dink, I'll I'll show that off. I'll rock that like it's a diamond nickel. I mean this one. But we are getting some bites. I'll be a small one. More action than we had at the licking mouth. At Kaiser, sorry, bad typing. Oh, okay. You don't want to see what kind of typos I do. I have my own language when I text message people. I can never seem to hit the space bar when I'm texting, so I always hit the bottom row of keys. So like the N and the B and the M will be where the space should be. So it'll be two words joined together by a random letter B. Or I'll make letters. That happens a lot too. Space bar spin. Got any shad, Ryan? No, I don't have any shad this time. Uh, it's all bluegill right now. I kind of uh, did this spur of the moment. I went and uh, tried to track down some bluegill at a spot that usually I can get about 30 bluegill in less than a half hour. And that's rod and reel. That's not even what cast in. <clears throat> Nice little pond I know of. <clears throat> it's overpopulated with bluegill. There's nothing to keep them in check. They get too big for the bass. It's very deep. There's no catfish in it. So the bluegill just reproduce and grow. And they usually hit on the drop because they're so aggressive and they're so comfortable. But it's just been so hot that they were lethargic and it took me like an hour and a half to get them. And then I brought some frozen ones which I haven't even opened up. So they're thawed out for no reason. I'll refreeze them. That the pen. I'll save it for later. When I know I'm gonna do like an all night trip or I'm gonna drive along uh I like to try to get a good variety of bait. Live bait, frozen bait, I'll get some shad, creek chub, bullhead, bluegill, anything else I can get in the cast net like shiners and red horse suckers. If I get a big buffalo or carp, that works too. I'm not afraid to use anything for bait. I was using a largemouth bass cut up earlier for bait. And here in Ohio, that's legal. Something's still playing with that. It's just subtle switches like it's just sitting there mouthing it. Could be a turtle. I've never seen, I've never caught a turtle out of the river, not out of the Ohio River. I know they're in here, but. Oh, the Great Miami is a totally different story. That, that river is literally turtles. 
Don't have any WD-40 now. A lot of people swear by it. You're right. I'm a match the hatch kind of guy. Can't say I've ever used strawberry gel for chicken livers or hot dogs. Weedy balls. There we go. Come on, baby. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it. We might actually have a fish for sale. He's being real bashful about it. Just real subtle, real subtle twitches on that bottom light. It had a couple good sways, but it's not sticking and committing. You ain't trying to run off with it. <clears throat> now that one's closer to the, the shoreline. About 50 yards downstream. The higher light, which is my whisker seeker rod, is farther out into the river. Um, like a, a big log or a rock or something. It could have been coming up out of a lip too, but whatever that was that interfered with me having a smooth retrieve, I threw it back to it, just above it. Just upstream from it. Hoping something would swim out and try to get it. But it seems like something is closer to the shoreline trying to play with that lower light. But I do like to have a good variety of bait. Uh, I think next time I go out, I'm going to definitely try to swing over to uh, one of these local bait shops and see if they got mud leeches. I love those things. I think some people in other parts of the country call them horse leeches, they're carnivorous. They're, they're not uh, blood-sucking leeches. They're brown, very, very fat, you get like an inch to two inches wide. They got orange or br uh, yellow stripes that go along one side of each of them. Uh, on, on the left and right side of their bodies, one, one orange stripe on the left side and one on the right. And they're brown and they're, they look ripped like an earthworm, kind of flat. But they're uh, carnivorous. They like eating night crawlers and stuff, and grubs, and the mud. It's mud. Some people call them horse leeches, I've heard too. But they're great for fishing with because, especially with cut bait, that doesn't move on its own, you know? You put your cut bait on, like a shad head, put that on first, and then you put the mud leech on, you put the, the barb of the hook through its mouth, and uh, kind of like hooking up a, God, I'm not familiar with bass fishing terms. What's the rig where you just like hook the tip of the plastic worm? Senko or wacky rig or something? No, wacky rig in the middle. Sink, you, you put the hook right through the tip of it. You do that. And uh, it will, uh, the leech will attach itself to that cut bait, trying to eat it. And the leech, it, it keeps your bait from getting pulled back off the hook easier. So you don't lose your bait, but when they're all scrunched up, they're like maybe four or five inches long. And once they go into water, they can stretch out to like two feet long. They get real stretched out. And they dance all over the water trying to swim around. And that action uh, triggers a lot of uh, curiosity from catfish. They're a super fun bait to use. I'll even do the same thing with night crawlers. I'll take some cut bait and then I'll put one or two night crawlers on the hook, leave them kind of loose and dangly so they dance around. What's the most weird bait that you've ever used while you're catfishing? Let's hear from you guys and I'll tell you a couple of months. Whether it was like a weird critter, like a mouse or a chunk of possum tail, I don't know. Bloody tampon. 
Well, you gotta swear by that. Hang up on wrapped in pantyhose. Used. Kinda gross. Some of the weirdest stuff that you guys have fished with. body, like legs and tails and heads and necks. We had a lake where I used to work at turtles, and I'm talking multiple hundreds of turtles. There was more turtles than there were fish. So, every now and then when I would catch one, I would uh, cut the head off and I would use the different chunks of its body for bait if I needed some bait. I would use its uh, chunks of its legs or its tail, or I would just hook the head. It was all bloody. I'd use those and caught fish with it. Um, did the same thing with a water moccasin. We had a water moccasin swimming under our rods. Our brother took the landing net that we had near us and uh, whacked it good on the head one time, got a lucky hit, killed it. We cut the head off, threw that in the woods, and then uh, chunked him out into like five or six good, maybe three inch long chunks, and hooked those on, caught some nice flatheads on it. Snake meat is tough as leather trying to put a hook through it though. It was like trying to hook a belt. All that muscle. I really hope he comes back and commits to that rod. I want to see a bite. This guy's got a nice view. Still fireworks going off. It is almost 1 8 in the morning. I imagine there's not a lot of alcohol consumption going on because people can't sell alcohol in the bars no more. Isn't that stupid? I'm over all this pandemic stuff. I'm sick of the coronavirus. I'm sick of the face mask. I'm sick of all the political garbage that's going on all over the media. You can't even look at Facebook no more. I don't bother opening up Facebook half the time as much as I used to because all you see is violence and hate and arguing and drama and stuff getting manipulated, words getting twisted, people's reputation getting ruined. Not something I want to talk about. This right here, this is what I want to be a part of. There's a woman who lived to be like 120 years old. She got interviewed. Asked her what her secret to a long life was. So she smoked like two packs a day her whole life. Chain smoked cigarettes like her secret to living so long, living your life the way you do. And the only thing she had to say was, I stayed at home and I minded my own business. Amen to that. Definitely should have went to the Great Miami. The Ohio River is super fun for bass fishing, but these just aren't the right conditions for it. I came here because they had a. I always 
that word always loses me. It always leaves my mouth. Starts with an A. Advisory. Advisory. They had an advisory for a bunch of sewage water and stuff getting discharged from Middletown. And I knew that stuff was going to flow downstream, so I didn't want to be fishing in poopy water. So I came here where it's not as poopy water. But right now, the Ohio River is like a lake. Current's almost non existent. Fish are probably scattered all over the place. And one of the worst days to fish the Ohio River. Well, the best example I can think of is um, Labor Day weekend when they do the WEB and fireworks because they shut the dams down, they close the locks up, so then there is no current. So between Markland and Meldal, there is no current. And fish just scatter. And they do that so they can do the, they can light the barges and stuff do the barge fireworks for the weekend. But the current is almost completely halted. So then it really is like a big long lake. You got wind current, that's about it. That's about what it feels like right now here. I mean, the water looks like glass. There's a... Uh, Nothing jumping around. I'm not seeing a lot of surface activity from other fish like striper and gar. I'm not seeing a bunch of flippering from shad. I'm not seeing any of the nocturnal birds diving down and picking things up off the surface. There's no seagulls around, which usually there are. A lot of the wildlife activity is just kind of really slow and dead right now. So, I'd be really surprised if we were able to hook into one. I hope we do. Since the biting has stopped on that bottom line, I'm going to check it, put a fresh piece of bait back on it, and I'm going to throw it back out there and see if something's still interesting. Because I want to show you guys something. Appreciate you guys sticking with me and hanging out. Got 13 thumbs up, four people currently watching. I appreciate the time. I certainly don't like to waste people's time. Let's get in on some action. broke off. So we got to retie. But I don't think I'm going to put this rod out. I'm just going to retie my new leader for next time.
dark is not fun.
out into the current just a little bit more. We'll see if something's out there because I know there's some current breaks out there like rocks and stuff. And something just might be hanging by one of those rocks. We'll see if we get a nibble. Appreciate you guys watching. I know it's kind of dull. But I will guarantee you the next video that we put out will not be dull. Because the Eagles Nest, where I'm probably going to be doing my video, does not underproduce. At least when you're bank fishing. If you're on a boat, you can kind of locate things. You got more access to get around places nobody else can get. Fish the deeper water and not be perpendicular to the current. A little more you can do with a boat on this river than you can from the bank. Right now, I'm one little piece of cut bluegill in all of this. <laughs> so, it's a lot of sauce. tail slap something I should something else I guess I could mention is a uh, you are out here in places like this you need to kind of be mindful of the critters that might be underneath you too like snakes spiders especially brown recluse Wolf spiders can pack a pretty mean bite if they're big enough. Definitely don't want to get pegged by a copperhead. Water moccasin, whatever you call them in your area. Bites, ticks, mosquitoes, all that good stuff. And I don't have no fire to keep bug repellent, bug repellent on me, so I'm just brushing stuff off as I see it. I might be a little itchy when I go home. This trip was uh, not very prepared. Ugh. But I did want to show you that we're back. We're getting active again. There's going to be more live streams throughout the summer. I'd like to try to meet up with some different anglers throughout the year. Different locations. Maybe I bring it to me or I come to them. Well, I got the free time to do it. Definitely be doing some more production videos, that's for sure. Every once in a while, I want to get out and live stream and let you guys kind of hang out with me. Stop doing all the work of editing and putting things up and just talk, chat, hang out. Whether it's one person that watches me or 300. have a peaceful time together. If you can't get out and fish, you get to kind of live vicariously through me. I think I'm going to be calling it quits pretty soon here. What we got? 127?
lying down. In fact, I'm actually starting to get a little sleepy. My perkiness has kind of went away in my voice. Oh, random thought. Night fishing tip. Bring your roll of toilet paper with you at all times. Pack of baby wipes. Something to wipe your keister with. In case you have a uh, bowel movement emergency, they cannot make it to a port of or here. You don't want to be wiping with poison ivy by mistake, you know what I mean? Toilet paper can actually make a good fire starter. If you know how to make a char cloth, that's one of the best fire starters. You learn that by watching Survivor Man. There we go. Get the AC going in it. I love that remote start. A couple months ago, I got a 2019 Ranger Lariat Sport 4x4. I originally wanted to get a Ram Rebel, a new Ram Rebel, but I couldn't beat the deal that they were offering me on this. So I got it. That's what's going to haul all the whisker stick stuff around. So just now tuning in, I've seen some people popping in. No action yet, no bites. Well, we've got some bites. Uh, got one rod in. We're only one line in the water right now. I broke off. I didn't feel like baiting it back up, but I did tie a new leaf and stuff back on it for later. I'm guessing whatever was pecking away at that. And this is going to be going back to where uh, I said to make sure you know where all your stuff is before you start fishing. So you ain't got to fumble around looking for it. I got my Mountain Dew bottle and my headlamp right in front of me. All my tackle and stuff in my tackle bag and put up. My bait bucket's right next to it. You can obviously see my rods. And then I just got this tripod and battery pack. I can pack up and go in probably two minutes. I don't have... If you get something out, put it back where you got it. Or put it away completely. Don't just leave it sit if you step on it. It's nothing like stepping on a tackle train. Everything's flying everywhere. Let alone getting hooks and stuff in here. And they're going nuts with them firecrackers. It's only 1.30 a.m. I'm surprised I'm not seeing, still seeing more fireworks going off. We'll have to come back here when it's uh, flooded up some, and then I can talk about uh, some tips and things I do for fishing flooded rivers. How to be safe while you're doing it, especially if you're bank fishing. Flooded fishing is way, way more dangerous on a boat. 
still a lot of things you got to watch out for, but it is some of the best fishing you can do is when a river's flooded up like this. Like, the Ohio River, I like coming to this spot most and the water's over top of our heads right now. The camera would be underwater, my head would be underwater, bait is sitting. Because this bushy, tree infested, rock infested slope of a bank is where they come to hide when the river's up to get out of the current. So I fish in this. And nine times out of ten, I catch something. I usually catch some nice channels of blue. The first time I came to this spot, I caught a 30-something pound blue cat. Right? Pretty much where I'm standing is about where I had the bait. <clears throat> <coughs> We'll have to come back here when it's flooded. I think it's a lot funner. Great Miami, not so much when it's flooded. Way different nature. Totally different monster. Because it's a smaller, skinnier river, so the current is like amplified. It turns into like a whitewater raft. It's almost impossible to fish. least compared to other stuff around here. I know some guys, you have to fish stuff like that, like the Mississippi River. It's pretty much stays like that. You guys fish with 32 ounce weight like it's a twin. I think the most weight I've ever had to use here was 12. Oh, there's some fireworks. I think 12 is the most I've had to use here. <clears throat> Man, it is peaceful. I really do enjoy the quiet and serenity of it. Peaceful view, minus the blurry focus. I'm trying to tap the screen to get it to auto focus on the bridge. I'm trying to tap on the bridge to get it to hone in on it. I'm wanting to. <clears throat> it's also part of why I'm staying out of the picture so it doesn't mess up the focus as bad. If you ever want to come out and get your mind right and get some peace and quiet and enjoy some, I don't know how to say it other, other than get some calm, this is the perfect place to come. And when it's a little higher up and the current's moving a little bit more, it's a little more active, the fishing is definitely a lot better. But for now, I think I'm going to start packing stuff up. I'm going to get ready to go home, take a shower, try this again tomorrow. I can't promise that I'll go live tomorrow, but uh, there's definitely going to be some filming going on, so I appreciate you guys watching and following along with me. I'm still here. I appreciate the, the support. Thanks for sitting and uh, staying bored and quiet with me. Woo! I feel. And uh, we'll hopefully have some better luck next time. This was kind of a spur of the moment trip. I didn't do a lot of planning on it. So everything kind of looks a little uh, choppy. But we're getting back into it. It's 2020. Whisker Sticks is coming back with a lot more content for you on YouTube. So make sure you're subscribed. We're going to be doing a lot more production videos, maybe more live streams to come, and all kinds of goodies. So, until then, thank you guys so much for watching.
Fight line. God bless. And we'll see you in the next video. Take care.